Chapter 5 of Mr. Wicker's Window, recording by Vicky Window by Carly Dawson, Chapter 5. Well now began silly. That's a tale that not everyone knows, don't you see a mistress? Becky would not care to be reminded of it, mark you for reasons. I shall shortly tell his eyes humorous as they were took on a shrewdness under their sandy brows as if judging the character of the boy before him and his ability to keep a secret. First and foremost, he said you had best know who I am. He leaned back and hooked his films under his armpits in a prideful gesture. My lad said Ned silly thrusting out his chin. I'm a member of the Mirabelle's crew. It's a Mirabelle, Chris exclaimed. Why that's the ship in the bottle. I agreed silly nodding sagely. The model of it's in the bottle, right enough since it's myself that made it the last trip home from the Chinese seas, you made it yourself. Chris breezed looking. I gasped at the nod, nodded fingers, sick and roughened by work in leather, picturing to himself the delicacy of the miniature ship that I saw snugly and its transparent walls. How in the world could you get it inside? He asked Ned Bagged, his head, art does a trick and a tedious thing. No mistaking, but there's time and disparate for it coming home from China, China, you've been there. What's it like? Chris wanted to know his eyes eager, silly, smiled at him. A snaggletooth friendly grin. That's a tale for another time. My boy, for those much telling there you want it. The story of Becky's fine. Hat. Yes, yes. Urge Chris before she comes back. Well now began Silly being a member of the Mirabelle and all means. I see quite a bit of the sport when we're home. He looked arch as if Christmas. No, the reason for that and CN is how Mistress Becky and me are fast friends. Well she's told me a thing or two that not everyone knows. He took a poll on the mug and marked the froth from his lips. It seems he began that in her younger days, MRE's Becky had one paving. She'd seen this hat that she now wears in a milliner's and have it. She must now and the sailor lean forward as the story held its own interest. Now, how does that sort costs? Many, a shilling and Becky worked and saved that bonnet for over a year. He eyed Chris again closely. If you tell what I tell you, Chris lad silly conjured him. I still get, even with EA, I swear I will for I would never want to hurt the feelings of Becky or on my oath. I'll not tell sir, not to anyone. Chris assured him that silly. Seemed satisfied. Well, now hunching closer with his chair. It seems long last she paid for that on it. I decided to wear it to the spectacle that very afternoon. The spectacle Chris questioned his forehead wrinkled what's that. Bo cackled silly. You are a country. Boy. Why the spectacle where the players are for theater. What else? Oh, Chris said shortly and thought of television in the movies and held his tongue. He was beginning to try to fit himself into two centuries before his own time. Yes. Took up silly. So as I was saying, Mr. Spuzo being young and fighting them days and rightfully proud of that bond that she had took so long to earn warrant to the spectacle together with her best gown. Now, as you see much acquainted with the theatre, me lad, let me tell you that we give it here in any hall, standing vacant and out of doors and fair weather. And we set the benches in rows. For those that pay for seats. He pulled out an evil-smelling clay pipe and stuffed it with tobacco, tamping it down with one grubby forefinger. And when it was well, it pointed the stomach, crisp by way of emphasis, Mr. Specie gets herself a good place on this occasion and sits herself down a tossing of her feathers and her flowers. And as proud as a peacock, every inch of her, the people pack the benches and the performance then begins rightly and silly job. The pipe stomach Chris rightly only ladies of quality wear such hats as Becky wore. And should they go to the spectacle, which would be doubtful for the crowd, makes it no place for a gentle woman. They would be sitting off apart. Don't you see? But Becky sat spang in the center of the hole and you've seen the hat is big enough for two and no mistake and spreads along as well as up well, time came to begin. 
players came out on the stage just beacon of their parts and a brandishing of their arms as they do when all at once a gentleman sitting behind Becky Boozer leaned forward and asked her ever so politely Madam says he please be so good as to remove your bonnet Here's the lean forward one hand on his stomach to facilitate the bow aping as best he could the speech manners of a gentleman in a flash He resumed his own character and turned to Chris. Well, did she take it off? And a demand of Chris frowning with concentration twice asked with rare politeness. Anyone would agree to that. He shook his head solemnly. Why no master Christopher, that she did not a. Uh. Becky had just paid the final pence upon that hat. And after a year, seven months and eighteen days that hat was, she wanted all the holders to admire it. What cared she if the gentleman seated on the bench behind her some more of her bonnet than of the play and Becky Boozer's opinion towards a more than fair exchange? So she tossed her head, did Becky, and denied. Not even a reply. Silly tossed his own son, bleached that, and perched up his mouth and imitation of Becky. Then, with another rapid change of grimace, he's going to emphasize to signify the growing intensity of the situation, and leaned halfway across the table, shoved the dishes, pies, and pickles out of his way with his elbows. His deep voice sank to a husky whisper. So the performance went on, and over a glimpse of it, that the poor gentleman seceded as he was behind a Becky Boozer. Once more. He bends forward and he speaks at her ear, urgent, like silly. His eyebrows rose and fell with salutation. So strong was the grip of the story upon him that it was evident that he fancied himself at the play, and he could see the whole thing for him, as plain as day. The poor gentleman says again. He took up Madam. He says, "I beg of you, please, to be so kind. Nothing of the spectacle. Can I see, please?" And be so good as to remove your hat. And would you believe it, my lad? No, Ned. So he shook his head from side to side. No, no, no. You would not. He leaned back, waving his hand as if to wipe away any lingering doubt in Chris's mind. Mrs. Rebecca Boozer was that proud, that proud. He dropped his voice. That not for the world would she remove her bonnet. Dear me, no. She tossed her head again, feeling all of them plumes a toss and two, and sat up straight to them before. And she had tall woman master silly took a red bandana handkerchief from his coat tail pocket and mopped his face. So excited and heated had he become at his own telling of the tale. Then once more he leaned forward confidentially. Well, little did she dream a Becky Boozer for when she tossed her head a second time and made no motion to remove her hat. The gentleman bent toward her, and no doubt his words were for her alone. And this is what he said, Ned. So his blue eyes popped, and he kept his hand by the side of his mouth so that his words could carry no further than a few inches, dividing the boy and the man. He said, and so she told me it did sound like a roar of thunder there. No one else did seem aware of it. So then, Rebecca Boozer, wear your hat. The gentleman said, "The devil himself shall have no power to take it off in you." And do you know? Whispered Silly, and a low rumble. His eyes starting out of his head as were Chris's own. Cause I believe it must have been the devil himself who sat behind her there for from that very time. Rebecca Boozer has been unable to remove that hat either by pushing, pulling, prying, steaming, cutting, bearing, nor by any method. How I'm ever the devil it, the devil. It must have been Master Silly, exhausted by his recital, fell back in his chair with just strength enough left to replenish his pewter mug from the jug of ale, then refreshed. He sat them about down, wiped his lips, and coughed. And I at Chris, who sat staring at him, open mouth, try it yourself. He suggested wagging his head. I have. You'll not be able to heave it off. That I promise you. That hat is therefore good enough, Mister Boozer. Would that list be buried in that bonnet? He cocked his head the other way. I want you to think of that. Ned Silly inquired after a long and thoughtful pause. Chris found his voice master silly. He said respectfully, "Does she? Does she sleep in it?" He asked the picture of the elephant. 
tie in Becky Boozer with a counterpane and a her chin and the hat with 24 red roses and 12 raving, black plumes rising above the pillow to hold of the sailors. Fancy. He tipped back in his chair and laughed till he cried. And as he was coughing and spluttering, Mistress Boozer herself came rustling out of the passageway and across the kitchen to the table, be off with you. Boy, she cried you and silly. You're two of a kind that is playing to be seen. She looked from one to the other as Chris decided that it was a good thing for him, that Becky likened him to the object of her doting master silly, get along with you. She cried again, pulling Chris up out of his chair by his coat color. You were wanted by the master in his study. So look sharp. It's down the passage and to your right, Becky said, and knock before you go in. Chris started off, but in the dusk of the passage, he looked back in time to see Becky Boozer lost and tittering giggles and wild blushes as Master Silly, reaching up as high as his arm would go, chucked her under the chin. Chapter 5, Chapter 6 of Mr. Wicker's Window. This is a liberal walks recording. All liberal walks recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit liberalwalks.org. Recording by Elaine Twiddle, Mr. Wicker's Window by Carly Dawson, Chapter 6. Chris stood for a moment before the closed door of Mr. Wicker's study. His head was full of the story of Becky Booz's hat, or he might have glimpsed the room beside him, for the passage stopped at this point beyond the passage, lay the dimly glimmering shop with its bow window at the far end and the door to the street beside it. He might have been able had he not been so intent on Becky's story to slip past the dusty bales and the cases and out into what but Chris's head was ringing with Ned Silly's tale. The, all the things so different. And so absorbing that, surrounded him, he put out his hand not and on a hearing a low reply stepped inside the room. Chris entered his eyes round in order to take in every new sight was a small study. It stretched across the back of the house. The kitchen fireplace had its echo and a fireplace on the side of the wall and facing Chris three windows looked out into the bleached parent, apple trees, the ordered rows of the vegetable and herb garden. A final window at the end of the room at Chris's left, looked out on a little hill behind the house, Chris, without thinking step forward a piece or two in order to look at the familiar, ugly red and grey church at the end of Church Lane, it was not to be seen. There was only a pasture hemmed by woods and fine trees within the distance where M streets should be a roof or to a thin voice that came from nowhere and was everywhere broken to Chris. No, my boy, the church has not yet built. That will come in 70 years in 1860 to be exact confusing. Is it not Chris whipped around at the sound of the antiquarian voice, but for a moment longer, he could not see him and look toward the other end of the room with interest. Mr. Wicker's study was cozy and bright, well warmed by a cheerfully burning fire. The heavy curtains drawn back now from the windows to let in the morning sun were of a fine ruby damask. The furniture consisted as far as Chris was concerned of antiques to winch chairs covered in red leather, tacked at the edges with brass-headed nails looked invitingly comfortable. One had its back to Chris and the door and the other was empty. Both were drawn close to the snapping logs. Our grandfather clock stood in the corner between the fireplace and the first window and gave out a steady, deep talk. The carpet was a soft Indian rug of fine texture and many colors, red, blue, and gold predominating. Most surprisingly a steep spiral staircase of polished wood came down into the room in the right-hand corner, near where Chris stood. And Chris wondered for a moment if Mr. Worker's voice had come from the top of the stair, turning back, he sold at a desk opposite. Him stood between the two windows that faced the garden. It seemed very old-fashioned to Chris. No neat, folded writing paper, but large bold sheets covered in Mr. Wicker's delicate handwriting lay on the open top with several goose quill pens standing at the back in a pen holder. Chris noticed prints of sailing ships on the walls and candlesticks, holding candles and candle snuffers on the desk table and mental piece, a closed cupboard with carved doors stood at the far end of the room. Once again, Chris turned back to look for Mr. Wicker and to his astonishment now. 
saw him in the chair that he had thought empty a moment before Mr. Wicker, his elbows on the arms of the chair and his fingertips touched lightly together was watching Chris with interest and amusement. When the boy caught sight of him, Mr. Wicker nodded smiling and motioned Chris towards the other leather chair across from him. Good morning, my boy. So the old man, I trust you slept well, Chris slowly let himself down into the offered chair. Oh yes. Thank you, sir. He replied, I don't even know how I got to bed. Mr. Wicker made a sound that seemed to indicate that that did not matter. And a breakfast Mr. Wicker asked Becky fed you. Yes, sir. And Mr. Silly, he fed me too indeed Mr. Wicker, his eyebrows went up in an inverted V above his bright dark eyes, Ned Silly. So early well he's a loyal soul is Silly. You shall know more of him. He fell silent, observing the boys, sitting on the edge of the big chair. Mr. Wicker looked as if casually at the clothes Chris now wore, and which fitted him as though made to his measure. What is so seem to please? The old man for he nodded his bald head and his wrinkles multiplied themselves across his face. In a way Chris took to be his smile at last, he spoke again and his voice was strangely gentle and kind. So kind that the fool on this Chris had momentarily forgotten that the mystery of his position, the puzzlement and lost feeling that reclaimed him instantly. Should he allow himself to wonder at how he could get back again into his own life? And time was reawakened by the something he heard. And Mr. Worker's voice, the tears gathered in his throat and they had to swallow and cough several times before he could apply with any degree of clearness feel well. All right. I guess in a way, but there's a sort of spinning in my head in my stomach. If I try to figure any of this out, I just don't get it. He shook his head dubiously I feel alive. All right. And the food tasted good just now, but how in the world can all the changes come about or be, and there's something I should see to a home all at once. He needed desperately to know how his mother was that morning. He stood up abruptly. If I can just go now, please. Chris asked politely, but firmly. It's been very interesting, but I, his throat tightened up again and he made a helpless gesture with his hand and looking toward the window. Wondered if he could jump out into the flower beds and be off Mr. Wicker's voice would with such authority. That one did not question. It came again and it had a healing and it sound sit down. Christopher, my lad, he said, and his eyes were kind and tent and eager. We have much to talk of you and I, but first your mind and heart should be put at ease. Do you know who I am? Restive and anxious to be off. Chris nevertheless found it necessary to reply. You sell old stuff. That's all I know. He answered beginning to feel a trifle surly. Mr. Wicker nodded tapping his fingertips together. Yes, he agreed. I sell things in your time. But now in this time, what do you know of me? As he spoke, there was a change of tone as if a younger man was speaking. And in spite of his impatience to get home, Chris looked up sharply, Mr. Wicker was leaning forward and Chris felt himself immovable under the vigor of those dark eyes. Nothing, sir. He heard himself saying, not taking his eyes from those of the man before him. I am a shipowner Christopher for one thing, Mr. Wicker drew a slow breath, a merchant trading in tobacco, cotton, corn, and flour. But I am also, he paused as if to give Chris time to hear each word. I am also quite a fine magician said Mr. Wicker, Chris leaned back disappointed in school and full rabbits out of hats. He inquired no young man. Mr. Wicker on said with no show of annoyance, not rabbits out of hats that as you would say is for toddlers. Suppose I prove to you just how good go ahead, said Chris, whose only thought was still to get home, but who admitted to himself. A faint stir of curiosity, watched closely then commanded Mr. Wicker. I have been in my twentieth century shapes so that you would recognize me. Now I should regain my appearance of this time. Not a great change. I grant you, but there will be a difference. Watch me closely. Chris leaned forward in his chair. 
The room was well lit from three sides, sunlight and firelight mingled to wash Mr. Wicker in their joint apricot glow added to this, the two chairs Chris's and Mr. Wicker's were not more than four feet apart. Chris hunched forward yet a little more to lessen the space and watch for any movement. However, Swift he'd seen magicians before he told himself, but why soul was so amazing that Chris's lips parted in astonishment and his eyes stared and linkingly for the tiny figure of the old man before him wizard with age and wrinkled past belief before his eyes shook off, not 10 or 20 years, but 150, it left him while not a young man. Middle-aged a man of 40 years. The face was smoothed out and from thick chestnut hair was caught back with a black ribbon bow, dark eyebrows would level above steady eyes. I don't believe it. Chris briefed, you looked almost like a mummy before and now Mr. Wicker rose from his chair and now he stood six feet, no longer wizard, no longer feeble. Fascinating, is it not? He remarked with sardonic smile. A good trick. Do you not agree? Chris sat looking at him amazed, but still incredulous. Well, yes he admitted, but maybe with makeup or something, ah, uh, said Mr. Wicker and his voice was deeper and more vigorous to ah, uh, then we should try another. See if you can find me. And before Chris, his eyes, Mr. Wicker vanished into thin air. Chris looked about and got up. He looked under the chairs, under the table, behind the curtains, up the chimney, up the spiral, staircase of the windows in short, everywhere, and anywhere a man might hide and in a great many places where it was impossible for him to be finally, he stood in the middle of the room. You're not here, he said aloud. Oh, you saw, I am sad. Mr. Worker's voice. Look on the table. Chris looked on the table. A bowl of flowers stood in the center, a small silver tray with a finely blown glass and a round-bellied silver pitcher of water stood at one side. A few leather-bound books were all else to be seen, except if one could count that a blue bottle fly that buzzed lit on the flowers and buzzed. Again, it's not fair. Chris challenged aloud. You've got some trick hiding place. You're just not here. Yes, I am. Came the voice I am within reach of your hand. Christopher, Mr. Wicker told him and I will reappear and whatever part of the room you wish choose. Chris looked around him and then pointed at the end window there. He said by the window, there's nothing anywhere around it. Come back there very well sounded, Mr. Wicker's deep new voice. The blue bottle fly buzzed upward from the table, flew directly at Chris's nose. Hit it flew around his head and bumped into his ear. Down that'll fly Chris muttered and made a grab at it. The blue bottle buzzed towards the window. Swirled about hit Chris on the nose again with remarkable stupidity and blended off. Once more towards the window. Chris ran after it, it on the pane of glass swooped down and felt the angry wings and heard the enraged buzz in his cup timed. But before he could either squeeze the fly or open his hand to let it free, Mr. Wicker stood before him and Chris found himself holding on to the tail of Mr. Wicker's coat. And what do you think of that? Trick? Asked Mr. Wicker smiling. End of chapter 6, recording by Elaine Twiddle Sterling, Ontario. Check the 7 of Mr. Wicker's window. The silly parks. Recording only parks like clothing. Sign the public domain for more information or to volunteer, please visit the parks.org recording by Elite. Mr. Inaudible, Chapter 7, Chris was speechless and Mr. Vika answered himself. Yes, it is a good time. But before we talk, I should like to show you one more. He topped his hand on her shoulder and some other fun touch was wonderfully comforting to the boy who wants to be at home too. You're not Christopher. Mr. Victor asked. Yes, sir. Please. Verdict cannot be for time. Mr. Rico applied for you have important work to do. Mr. Wicker turned and walked back to the toilet or chairs. This is hence the lunker shorter. He stopped near the table and looked down. I know that Ortiz had left the hand to take in not only the home, but Chris thought the different time fell or this seems impossible to understand. He posed one thing, perhaps, inaudible there. We'll try to make it understand labor had been put it this way. 
Mr. Rika began when devastated once more in their chest before the fire. You have a television set at home. Oh yes. Classically enthusiastically. And say some of the poke homes. Yes, they are splendid. I know Mr. Vica Pokin, but will you please explain to me how television works? Because stare that this question of moment and then settle back in his chair, his fired pocket, his concentration, well, she, he stopped. Well, he began again. I think it has to do with slide twice. Passing Siva. Well, there's an electric. A person see, I guess it's that that sends out. He stopped altogether. Well, Kali, Moses, Mr. Vika, he ended lamely. It seems to be pretty complicated to go into Mr. Victor's smiled, with a engaging smile, showing Tom by tease. It is, he could formally his eyes thinking this is not very complicated. You probably wouldn't be able to describe to me the details of how they do a long distance telephone work. Either who to young man, Chris had to come back. When he saw Mr. Baker, wasn't laughing at him, but the complexity of such mechanical things. No, sir, I guess not. We are just glad to be able to use the, my expect. Ah, Mr. Weaker, in a tone of immense satisfaction, quite so your chest clear to be able to use and enjoy them. Bella, my boy, the things I've touched on you and what I am about to show you a part of knowledge which I get to be discovered and learn in a time beyond own and their ability to move is in time is in time. Mr. That's faculty is also still in the future. In the meantime, it remains a higher gift. Mr. You'll have it. Christopher, you were born with the ability to move backward into time that has passed whether or not you will master the gift of moving into the future. That of course, Mr. Wicker, s. it's impossible to tell your me, but for my purposes that you've been able to turn this fast enough, he looked searching Lakers. Have you understood what I've been saying to you now? He asked. I think so, sir. Chris answered slowly disability to move back and forth in time. Mr. Victor continued his normal far-fetched and the ability to send colored images and sound across the land into your own house where you can see and hear them. It is something which so far, I mean, of course in your time has not yet been discovered, but it will be used. Mr. Baker thoughtfully pulling at this forefinger. Yes, it will be. He looked at cost because if I turning for me k distance, but then tell it has been, it appears fantastic. Does it not? It certainly does apply to customers forever. If it weren't happening to me, I wouldn't believe it. No, not at Mr. Baker. And I would not blame you, but now he announced hising and turning toward the table. You must have your mind set the class to gather your mother motion for Coastal, Troy and him who really need to know only ones. And they say he smiled down at the boy beside him. They say the theme is believing. So you shall see for yourself, Mr. Baker picked up the hand, bell at Sarah picture, and set it in front of coasts. They say to Mr. Because it's quite fully the customer boss are the things to look into. Perfect. Tommy Hot. These are two equally well look and see to spend to be at the polished silver side of the picture. At first, the tone, the thought arrested from Becky Pose's power for having then a, he watched hound side of the picture missed over as if it happened. Fetus eyes water next, the scent of domestic partial cleared away and the sea clear the picture formed, inaudible sides. What I saw was a hospital home on the white badly, his mother in, beside her antitrust and the white coated man plus took to be a doctor. Then as if inside his head, he wasn't conscious of sound as in the home, which had called deeply still. He heard voices and words and saw the lips of the top scientist's antitrust move. The doctor said the turn has come. She reports who, but you really need, watch for care or saying, God, think God is antitrust. Hide covering her face with her hands. She burst into tears. The same, missed it over once again. And then it cleared the picture was merely a pitch on the table. And Mr. Vickers Home Plus looked up at the men who had it in playful. 
Is that the type too? He asked just to make mistake demanded my loudly. No son, the man had applied and his eyes confront us words. That is how it clearly is my word of honor and took his Kate supplies all at once with her tears and his cheeks. Her simmer tenuously, Kate lightness invited him in divided wish to laugh. Mr. Vickers intended out plank this. He said who can be at peace. And now he went on a postcard tone. I placed in the class cause it timed. Let us begin our talk in the check. The seven crowding by early October 2009 took the eight of Mr. Vickers. This is inaudible, really peroxide quoting sign the public domain for my information or to volunteer, please visit the covax.org. According by Ellie Mystery Casino by Kylie Dawson, Chapter 8, plus I turned the decolletage chair and called up in it as if it were a tone. Even Mr. Vicker's expression seemed to have changed. And there's a meth-affected head for the whole leaf impartial of content. The child now in the boy's face, that's reflected in some mention that of the man before sitting himself, Mr. Weaker Highness Cerebellum the type of the picture in the moment, Becky Boozer knocked on the door and stuck her trick and tickets of the opening you'll hang, sir. Schenk fired the feathers and horses popping as cheerleaders. Life's things. Auntie sweeping Pam. I did Becky. It occurred to me said, Mr. R looking sideways because that's some hot chocolate for master customer coffee for me would love to hear miss at this hour of the morning. And he edited seeing the entice that spark in the boy's eyes. Some of your delicious little cakes, perhaps most suddenly pimp Becky, most certainly as her after chocolate hot as it so happens in some cakes, new baked, she puzzled off and not time had turned. He said, I have china cups, but your flower pots for coffee and for chocolate, the bowl of sugar in the plate, by the high VE's cakes from Inaudible. Becky poured out the small table, which you placed between the two chairs, the diver safer settled the fire, given a poke. And if I shlocked before Mr. Spools or moved herself in her starch, Tyson, a punt and the outrageous head from her master's study now submits the wicker, pulling out the steaming planks, Michelle, her fish ourselves, and to shall listen. If you will twist took a seep of hot chocolate and a bite of Gordon cake decided that he had never tasted better. This point decided on this in himself. He gave his attention to the man across from him. I told him, Mr. Baker said that there was a ship owner in the merchant that is tall, but these are COVID times that evolution has had the land in its CASPP times a bed. This vast land is now conversed with the purse holes of democracy. Money's hard to come by and much needed for Chennai Washington stops for farmers, quarterback on the harvesting of sowing the PO, the feeling for them, for the land we belong in costly. He passed to seat this coffee and then put the cup down the stalk. She is so fast and to construct and build Mr. Baker said staring at the fire that this thought slow. He turned took us without financial help without money for the beginning of this new Orland. And this new government is talking to be born. This fight placed this find them a Catholic experiment of fail and all way to save it and have been sent back into the past from our future, my future and yours, instead of the land to help us make it her, he will not disappoint because the FA Mr. VICA turned burning eyes on Chris' face. You will help your contract. Get it. Stop. A fear of excitement, such as I'd never known such delicacy. And they started to speed almost upsetting the table and making the cups with Linda sauces or oh yes, sir. You bet. If I cannot help Mr. Baker's face spices satisfaction. He holds to and tailed out his hand. I knew you would. He said it had to be for cooking all the way, but there's always thought your hand. My boy for them worked two together, the toy hands, Latin, small a firm on the other end, Gus felt a new power coming to him, found a man whose handicap, just listen closely. Mr. Baker said, and unique in the world in which, for the benefit of this coin, Camplin, we must obtain its possessional mean that we can pay for many things in your city here towards building materials. This wonderful object is the child who he belonged the princess of China. Chris faded listening. 
The stool tree, Mr. Vickers is a tree that calls to puts out lifts and flowers and pierce food, but he has the wonder of it. And he bent his piercing eyes and twisted tent face. This coin play is made of jaws, leaves and flowers and you and see that food, the lifts, her emma hearts, the flowers, diamonds and sapphires defaults YouTube, be seated. Securus pals emerged in such a crash. If you can, despite his arms five and cuss eyes are shining with excitement imagine the possession of such plant, Mr. Wickerman on pike of a pint of his leather coals and flowers and food much like your orange trees, peoples the food and flowers. At the same time, they sat down again, the better to continue the conversation. The taking of such a pies will be had enough. Mr. Victor continued for it is well guarded, but there's a caper hazard he holds from his chair to walk about in this nervousness and eagerness at what lay ahead. Then he went on death. Men here posing as a merchant pledge to you receive him in the town when you walk there, which you shall have to presently, but here's the magic powers. And my bow tavel, Mr. Vickers shook his head and this ice became slits of height. We have been enemies for long, Mr. Baker said, but his, he had took it the better of me. You see, after the toiletry too, I just wanted to know he is. He heard of it. The power of metric certainly fight, inaudible, or myself up to this time when others have died before they could make use of it. You can imagine Mr. Vickers. That the trash at the top languishes itself is beyond pious. The China's empire knows it well. So they got about this paralysis. And so the sketch to Mr. Vikas told about striking the closed fist to front hand into the palm of the other and cause Kimberly out of his chair to stand watching the pacing figure and it came to inaudible court of the magician. It came to him that he had the gate confidence in the fetcher for this man, even knowing Miss Lacey did hang to make so much interest still in class mind, there was not the smartest kind of thought suspicion or this task. He knew without having to think it out that Mr. V.I.C.A. was a caveman cake and knowledge. And in harp, I liable and kind advice in that moment kissed with his horror face in the man. He had not yet known five day. There's one way Mr. Baker said reading about and standing still. And that is where I need your help is taught Becker Costa home taught's curse. This villain Claire too too for that is what is no better. This villain knows me and he knows my am power, but if the power were net boy led never would suspect. Then Mr. Weaker put both hands on her shoulders and looked certainly at him and only would have to opportunity to seize the trial tree. Can you learn with a no demanded Mr. Baker. Can you learn my magic magic cluster mud, those types, the fly and others. Yes, said Mr. Cook wildly many more well answered because after moment sought, I've got here, didn't die. I've come back all these years. So I guess I could, he looked up physically, at least I can tie his head, Mr. Vicker's little shake of pilot and acceptance booklet. He said, and all that you can learn for you. It will not be hard. That's just one thing plus said this past and this voice you say, so sees the type. That means just sealing. It must be to death. Mr. Vickers and his face was sinus. Most Mr. Cates are this faction of his feelings, you are the lead for me. He cried and class fed himself. Coloring was pressured the tone of Mr. Vickers voice and knew it from the first. It won't be stealing point, but for one thing, when, and having really, if you hedge the claim, you will pike DuPont from it and stick it in the count it would have got itself in Cohen's hive. And the punches will still have delicate Troy flowers for her hair. And now he said the smell polling chicken of your going to eat your lunch. And later we shall talk again, plus without smiling end of chapter 8. I cried then by early October, 2009.